uh, preparing to receive the Lord's table, and we're going to sing a song we don't always sing as a congregation, but it's a great song, and it uh, is what we're going to be talking about tonight, Born to Die, Born to Die. It's number 139 in your hymn book, so turn over there if you would. We're going to sing the first, the second, and the fourth stanzas of 139, Born to Die, on the night Christ was born. Let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. On the night Christ was born, just before break of morn, as the stars in the sky were fading, o'er the place where he lay fell a shadow golden gray. suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might live. Jesus knew when he came he would suffer and shame. He could feel every pain and sorrow but he left paradise with his blood he paid the price my redemption to jesus i owe born to die upon calvary jesus suffered my sin to forgive upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might live. Dearest Lord, evermore may thy cross I adore as I follow the path to Calvary. Of thy death I partake, my ambitions I forsake, all my will I surrender to Thee. Born to die upon Calvary, Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, He was wounded that I Great singing. Go ahead and be seated if you would and uh, have the opportunity to come to the Lord's table tonight. And uh, again, it is a reminder to us of the death of Christ. Jesus said, as oft as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. And uh, we remember that he was born to die upon Calvary. And we'll share some thoughts along those lines in just a little bit. But uh, this is a, a table of the Lord. It's the Lord's table. It's not just uh, the church table. Uh, and so the requirements for coming to the Lord's table is you know the Lord is your Savior and that you're, as far as you know, living a life of obedience to Him. There's no uh, known rebellion in your heart against God that you would need to make right. And if so, there's always a time of examination before we come to the table so that you have opportunity to make that right. And, uh, but it is a table of the Lord's fellowship, and so it's not just you don't have to be a member of Bible Baptist Church to partake of the table, but you do have to know the Lord is your Savior, and you do have to have living a life of obedience to Him. Uh, and, then, and nobody examines, you know, the Bible says you ought to examine yourself. Uh, nobody gets to examine anybody else, okay? Uh, this is between you and God, and uh, you just examine your own heart and ask the Spirit of God to reveal anything to you that needs to be cared for. And uh, if he doesn't, then it's a time for you to reflect on Christ dying for your sins, a time for you to reflect on the day you were saved, uh, to relive some of those, those times, and to thank the Lord uh, that he willingly gave himself on the cross uh, for us. He didn't, uh, he didn't fail in his mission. That was his mission. Uh, he came to give his life a ransom, and uh, he came to die. He was born to die, 
And so we, we understand that and we want to thank him uh, for that. Uh, during this time together tonight, all right? So what we're going to do right now while we prepare to serve you the elements tonight, I uh, just want you to bow your head, if you will, at your seat, and uh, just take this time alone with you and God. Anything that needs to be cared for, take care of it. Make sure you're in fellowship with him, that you can come to his table. And then if everything is clear, just, just thank him for your salvation. Thank him for his sacrifice on the cross. And just... Make this a time of remembrance. Now, our Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer, and Lord, we want to thank you for so loving the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Lord, we understand that unto us a Son was given, and you gave him to be the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for our sins on the cross, that we would be redeemed, we would be bought back to you by the blood of your only Son. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Lord, it's a time of year when many just think of his birth and many only think of the babe in the manger. But Lord, he, he came to grow. He came to be a man. He came to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And Lord, we realize that that's where salvation is. Salvation was not taken care of in the manger. Salvation was taken care of at the cross. And Lord, we're grateful and so thankful that we heard the good news and that we understood that Jesus died for us. Lord, thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for being the sacrifice for our sins, for being crucified, buried, and then rising again and now interceding for us at the right hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray that as we partake of these elements and we remember your body that was given and your blood that was shed, that we'll have a renewed dedication, fresh and new, to live our lives, living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. So bless our time of remembrance here this evening. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. <laughs>
the unleavened bread that you have uh, tonight is picturing the body of the Lord Jesus. It's unleavened because leaven in the Bible was always a symbol of sin, and there was no sin in the body of Christ. Uh, he was the only sinless one that ever was. Uh, the Bible says he was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. And uh, that's important. What happened was his, his perfectness, his righteousness, he took our sin on himself. And when we put our faith in Christ, his perfectness, his righteousness is put on our account. And that's how you have salvation. And so we thank the Lord Jesus for giving his body on the cross for our sins. I want Brother Wallace to stand if he would and lead us in prayer this evening thanking Jesus for giving his body on the cross for our sins. Our most kind Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you. Uh, Lord, uh, by my actions, but I need your help. Uh, through this next year, this is probably the last time this year we'll take of the, take of the Lord's Supper. And Father, I remember your words that you've been an example to us. Lord, I would ask that you would give us the strength, Lord, that you to allow ourselves to allow you to shine through us more than we ever have this next year. And Father, thank you so much for sending your son, and Lord, for his body that he suffered all those stripes. Those stripes were for me and the lost. Lord, I can't thank you enough except to show it with my actions. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Paul gave instruction to the church at Corinth about the Lord's table, and he concluded after having the bread and, and the juice, he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And the juice you have tonight is, again, there's no leaven in it. That's why it's not wine, because that would be sin. And uh, le no leaven in it, that's why it's juice. But the juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood is important. She played earlier, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. And uh, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Uh, all the way back to the, the, the Passover lamb in Exodus 12 and the blood on the doorposts. Uh, it always was a blood sacrifice that would have to take place. And so Jesus was the Lamb of God that shed his blood for us on the cross. And I'd like Brother Polabel, if you would, please, you stand and lead us in our prayer this evening and thanking Jesus for shedding his blood on the cross for our sins. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together and partake of the perfect uh, blood that you've rep represented by the Jews. And it's the perfect blood of Jesus Christ that forgives us of our sins and takes us and gives us a home in heaven. We ask that you would be with us tonight as we take this and that we go across the closer to you as we see your day approaching. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There should be a little place for that to go in the back of your chair there in front of you. And you put that in there if you would, and we'll collect those when our service is over this evening, all right? Take your songbook. Let's sing again together, shall we? Turn over, if you will, to 133. 133, Angels We Have Heard on High. You can remain seated while we sing. And the children, you need to, if you want to go now to your club, you can go there, all right? 133, Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis day. Now, a few announcements for us. You can uh, get your prayer guide out if you want. We're not going to go through the uh, prayer list as usual this evening, and um, we'll be a little different tonight. But uh, if you would, look at the coming events. Remember, uh, pray for the uh, Are You Inside down at the prison tomorrow night, and as well as Are You right here Friday night at the church. We'll have that right on through as usual. And uh, Saturday morning, uh, I think they're going out to London. I think Andy's working, and Danny's not here. And let's see, Bill... McKeon, is he here? 
So the guys who are out there aren't here, so I'm, I, I think they're having a 21st. I don't know if they're having it on 31st, but they're having it on 20, 24th, all right? And then don't forget Sunday, 1030 and 530 on Sunday, all right, for the Lord's Day services on Christmas Day, and we'll look forward to a great time together uh, on Christmas Sunday. And then remember, January 1st, we'll not have our New Year's Eve thing because of Saturday evening, but we will. Uh, we're going to do all that on Sunday evening that day, all right? So we'll move up an hour, 530. Bring your things to eat in like you normally do for New Year's Eve. Uh, we'll have our service. Uh, we'll unveil the theme, and uh, then we'll probably, uh, the plan is right now, we'll go to the Fellowship Hall, and uh, while we eat, we'll go through all the slides from last year, and you get to see all the highlights, okay? So that'll, uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a wonderful evening on uh, Sunday evening, January 1st, 5.30 for that night as well, okay? Um, just a, a couple things to add on your list. If you if you remember this, Brett and Lisa are preparing to move, and they, he sent me a note today. They could use some help just packing some things. Uh, if you're available Thursday or Friday after 1 p.m., right? After 1 p.m. You see Brett or Lisa tonight. If you can help at all uh, with some packing, uh, I know they'll appreciate that if you can give them a hand on that. Now, on the inside, uh, on the... Uh, uh, you want to make a note, the last name on the cancer list there, Laura Marshall. Uh, this is someone that Carol Hoskins knew, and uh, she gave me a note tonight that uh, Laura Marshall has graduated to heaven. And uh, the Lord has healed her. Amen. He just decided to take her to glory, amen. And, uh, but pray for her family. That's always difficult when our loved ones go, and uh, it's hard to, to be parted from them. Uh, so pray for the family of Laura Marshall. She's graduated to heaven, all right? Um, continue to pray for these on the health list. Uh, Paula Ross, if you noted, is going to be moving. I don't know that's happened yet, but it's going to happen. Uh, she's going to be moving up to a, a what they call Mayfair uh, rehab up on Bethel Road, okay? That's, uh, that's going to be happening here soon. I don't think it's happened yet, though, but we wanted to make you aware of that. She's doing very well, and I uh, really appreciated everybody coming up on Saturday and singing for her and such, and the gifts that you brought for her. Uh, she sent a nice uh, note to us about that, all right? And then um, uh, Brenda Como, it's, uh, I, I want to say it's C-O-M-E-O-U-X, pretty close, something like that. Uh, this is a friend of Susan. Uh, Brenda came, I want to say a year or so ago, and uh, was in the service, and, uh, and Brenda is saved, and uh, but see, they found out she has a heart condition right now, and the doctor's only given her about six months to a year to live. Uh, so pray for Brenda. She's not a, oh, Brenda's in her 30s, maybe, I would say. So um, if that, young young lady still, so uh, keep Brenda Como in your prayers. I know she would appreciate that. All right. All right. I think that's all. I, all we have to go over and make sure that we're we're set. If you didn't get your offering envelopes yet, they are down there on the table. Make sure you pick yours yours up. I think there's a sign up sheet too for the workers' dinner, which is just around the corner now, January seventh. It's a Saturday evening at five o'clock, and uh, that's for anybody involved in the ministry here, or if you want to be involved. Or if you ought to be involved in the ministry, okay? I want you to come out and be part of that night. Uh, we, uh, it's it's kind of casting our vision for the new year, and you get to see different areas that uh, we that are open that uh, need someone to serve, and you can plug yourself into some of those areas and be involved. Uh, you want to be a part of that night, okay? So just sign up for that, and we'll have a good time together on January 7th. All right. Looking to see if anybody's here tonight for the first time. Any visitors here this evening? I didn't think I saw anyone. I think it's us home folk here this evening on a few days before Christmas. All right. Well, take your songbook. Let's sing again together, shall we? Away in a Manger, number 148. Away in a Manger, 148. And once you have it, let's stand together to sing it. And Brother Bob will lead us. 148. Asleep on the hay, the cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying, he makes. I love the Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my. 
cradle till morning is nigh. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. As you find your seats, let's sing that last together. Be near me, Lord Jesus. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care. And take us to heaven to live with. seated. Good singing tonight. Ushers will come and get our offering this evening. We, um, somebody lose a phone. The phone was found in the back of the church here. It's an Altel or Alcatel One Touch or something. Cricket? Cricket phone? Anybody? I just turned it on. I thought it was dead, but it, it came on. I'll, I'll see. It doesn't, probably won't say anybody's name, will it? Now it's just staring at me, says Cricket. Well, I'll, I'll. Now that would be, that would be Leland's. But, uh, 
I'll just shut it off and we'll hold on to it. If somebody says they're missing their phone, then uh, we'll have it, all right? If I figure out how to turn it off. Well, I'll pray for the offering and then we'll turn it off, all right? Or see if I can figure it out or I'll stick it under the organ or something. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm holding it in. There it goes. There it goes. All right. Just had to threaten it. <laughs> no, it. It's all right. All right. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on the offering. Father, thank you for the privilege to give, and we pray your blessing on our giving tonight, Lord. Thank you so much for how much you give to us. And Lord, accept the gifts that we give back to you now and use it for the furtherance of the gospel here in this place. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Take your Bible tonight, if you would, and let's go to John chapter 12, please. John chapter 12. It's going to be a, I don't think it'll be a lengthy Bible study. Just want to center our thoughts around that theme of born to die. And in John 12, notice with me, if we could have this on low, that would be a real blessing to my heart and the rest of me as well. All right. Thank you. John 12, 27, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight. And Lord, as we desire to look into the scriptures and just... Uh, understand again uh, the purpose of your coming that Lord you were all the, the the birth the announcement to the shepherds the the swaddling clothes Mary and Joseph the journey to Bethlehem everything Lord was because you were coming to be a sacrifice for our sin you were coming to die on the cross God becoming a man so Lord you could save us and we want to thank you tonight. And I pray you'll bless our study this evening, Lord, and, and help us to be able to help others to understand why that baby was in the manger. So, Father, bless our study of your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. A lot of people, all they think about at Christmas time is the babe in the manger. Uh, that That's what Jesus is to them, is still a little baby, and we get... They get, uh, even, even unsafe folk will get warm feelings uh, singing Silent Night or Away in a Manger uh, like we just sang. Uh, but they, they, by and large, most of the world does not understand why the baby is here. Why Jesus was in the manger. Uh, was he just here to, to be a good man? Was he here just to teach good things? Was he here just to be a good philosopher? But, but you understand, the birth was no accident. That had been prophesied and foretold in many, many prophecies in the Old Testament. In fact, it had been planned since before the foundation of the world that Jesus would come and be born in Bethlehem. 
It was, it was with a plan and with a purpose. Bethlehem is only five and a half miles from Jerusalem. Okay? And, and so five and a half miles from Bethlehem to Calvary. Jesus, it, it, even in his birth, I believe that shadow of the cross from Calvary would have hung over his cradle. He knew what was coming. And, and I think it cast its shadow upon him all the way through his life until he finished his mission. Until on the cross, one of the seven sayings that he uttered was, It is finished. It is finished. He did what God sent him to do. And so we know that the purpose, just as we sang tonight, the purpose of his birth was his death. All right? And I'd want to give you uh, several statements this evening or different uh, declarations, I guess, of, of where it was declared that Christ would come to die. Number one, I think it was declared before the creation of the world. It was declared before the creation of the world. Now, you're going to use your Bible a little bit tonight, okay? So turn over with me to Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13. Interesting verse. When it talks about these who are going to worship the Antichrist, it says in verse number 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, now watch, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb. The book of the life of the Lamb, or the Lamb's book of life. Notice the last phrase there, slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, in God's eyes, it's hard for us to imagine because our minds don't think that way. Our minds think in past, present, and future. God is always in the present. That's why He's called the great I Am. Not I was or I will be. He is always I Am. And so in, in God's mind, the Lamb was slain even before the foundation of the world. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse number 23. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 23. This is Peter's sermon on Pentecost, if you will. And notice what he says about Jesus Christ. Look at verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. He was delivered by the determinate and, and by the determinate for counsel. It says counsel and foreknowledge of God. And so God had it decreed before the creation of the world that Jesus would die. He knew that would be the plan. Notice 1 Peter chapter 1. This, these are familiar verses probably to you. 1 Peter 1 and verses 18 through 20. Where the Bible says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received from tradition by your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now look at verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before what? The foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. That, that lamb, the blood being shed, that was foreordained, preordained by God before he laid the foundation of the world. Isn't that incredible? And so God declared it before the creation of the world. Number two, it was declared in the Garden of Eden by God. It was also declared in the Garden of Eden by God. Uh, Genesis 3.15, the Bible says, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and you'll bruise his heel. That's the uh, prophecy of Calvary where Christ will, will bruise the head of Satan. He'll crush the head of Satan and he'll bruise his heel because he was bruised for our transgressions. So we have that first promise all the way back in Genesis. The fall of man and, and the redemption of man and the pronouncement of Satan's defeat even way back in the garden that the Lord pronounced that Jesus would die and his death would bring victory over Satan. And then all the way through the Bible, from Genesis 3, 
when God kills animals and sheds their blood and clothes Adam and Eve with their skin, all through the Bible you find a scarlet thread running all the way through where it's always a blood sacrifice to take care of sin. Always. What was the first murder in the Bible over? Whether God, you come to God through a blood sacrifice or you come to God by your own works. See, Abel bought a lamb of the first thing of his flock and he bought a blood sacrifice. Cain had a garden and he brought the fruit of his own hands. See, it was all over. I don't want that blood. I don't want that. that but that's what was foreordained by God before the foundation of the world. That was declared by God in the Garden of Eden. And, and, and Adam and Eve taught that. And if they taught that to Abel, I would say they taught that to Cain too. Uh, but Cain didn't want to accept that or go that way. Number three. Number three, Christ, that Christ was, was going to die was declared by the prophets. By the prophets. Look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is a great prophetical chapter. You can, you can lead someone to the Lord using Isaiah 53. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful chapter on the death of Christ for us. Isaiah 53. Notice verse number 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 as he's traveling along, and Philip catches up to him. Where was he reading? Isaiah 53. Remember his question he asked Philip? Who's this guy talking about? Is he talking about himself or somebody else? And the Bible says, Philip opened the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. See, we don't have to say, well, is this talking about Jesus or not? Oh, you just think it is. No, no, no. The Bible says it's talking about Jesus. And so we're on good authority that this is Jesus suffering for our sins. Prophesied hundreds of years before he came. Hundreds of years before he came. Zechariah 12, and by the way, let me stop here for a minute. At the end of verse, just so you know, and I'll maybe have to deal with this sometime. With his stripes we are healed. That is, that is the, the, the stripes that were put on Jesus, the blood that was shed. That's not talking about physical healing, okay? There's not, some people think, oh, there's physical healing in the atonement. No, there isn't, okay? That's not what that's referring to. I'll, I'll go into that more in depth sometime with you and, and show you how that isn't true. But that's, that's, that's a false teaching that is kind of popular today. And I thought you ought to, you ought to just stick that in your, in your thinker there and, and remember that, all right? And uh, we'll deal with that another time. Zechariah 12.10, here it is. They will look on, on me whom they have pierced. Zechariah wrote about Christ. Now, look at Luke 24. Luke obviously is not one of the prophets, but I want to show you something here. Luke 24 is when these two are walking on the road to Emmaus. And they are walking and they're discussing the things that have happened the last few days in Jerusalem. And we know from reading the story, who are these two men walking with? They're walking with Jesus. They don't know it's Jesus until Jesus reveals himself to them. And, and, and uh, their, their eyes were open and, and he asked if they uh, had any meat and such and their eyes were open. And uh, notice in verse number 44, he said unto them, these are the words, Luke 24, 44, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning who? Me. So Jesus is saying, the law wrote about me, the prophets wrote about me, the Psalms wrote about me, and he opened their understanding that they could understand that. And they could see that they were talking about him. In fact, there was over a hundred prophecies, well over a hundred prophecies fulfilled with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Uh, exactly as God said it would happen. So they, the, God declared it for the foundation of the world. God declared it again in the Garden of Eden. And, did, and, and when he prophesied also the defeat of Satan when Christ died on the cross, then uh, the prophets of the Old Testament declared that Christ would die 
on the cross. Let's go to number four. The Christ would die was also declared by the angels. The angels. The angels at his birth. Now, they, they proclaim first to Joseph. Why? When the angel came to Joseph in the dream, look at Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. At least you're going to turn your pages in your Bible a little bit, aren't you? Matthew chapter 1. You know, in verse 18, he finds out that Mary's with child, and she says, well, it's from the Holy Ghost. Verse 19, it says, Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, privately or privately. But here's a, here's a great statement. But while he thought on these things, well, that's always a good thing to do. Think about it before you do it, okay? Give some time to think. While he thought on these things, what happened? The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. I wonder what would have happened if he hadn't had to take time to think. Hmm? Would have been a, a whole different scenario. But he took time to think and God spoke to him. And the angel appeared and here's what he said. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what? Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus is the Savior. And so the, the angel is telling Joseph, even in this message, even in what his name will be, that he's going to die. He come to be the Savior. And he's going to save them from their sins. He's going to pay the price for sin. Even the, the angels, when they announced to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He's going to be the Savior, and you're going to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. So that was proclaimed by the angels. Let's go to number five. Christ to die was also declared by the gifts that the wise men brought. The gifts of the wise men. Now for that, you're in Matthew chapter two. You should be there if you're still in one. Uh, two comes after one. Boy, you get, you get deep Bible teaching here, whether you need it or not. Uh, and, and Matthew two and I want you to understand something here in, in verse 1. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Herod the king had heard these things. He was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And, of course, he gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together and demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, and that, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Did you notice what he said? Go and search diligently for the young child he didn't say go look for a baby okay he said look for a young child then when they heard the king verse 9 they departed and lo the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was and when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceeding joy now verse 11 when they were come to the stable uh oh no they, they, they weren't at the stable were they no they came to the house. Mary and Joseph aren't in a stable anymore. He's not a baby anymore. He's a young child now. And they have a house. And they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I'm not sure where it got started that the wise men show up at the, at the you know, manger, but that's kind of how it, it, it's coming. But that, that isn't the case. They were here... Remember, when Herod decides then, they don't return to Herod, and Herod decides, all right, I've got to try to kill this, uh, this, this baby. But he doesn't kill the babies. He kills, he kills all the young children, what? Two years of age and under. Somewhere between a few months old to two years old, Jesus is at this time when the wise men come uh, to worship him. And so they open their treasures, but they give him. And, and by the way, it doesn't say there were three wise men. We, we kind of deduct that because there were three gifts given to him, but there could have been more than three wise men 
that made the journey. We don't know that. Uh, if you want to have three, that's fine. If you want to have six, that's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. But they brought three gifts, and that's of significance. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, because he's a king. And you give gold to a king, and that represents his kingship. Frankincense, because it's, it's a gift of worship that we offer God. Frankincense represents the gift of worship. Giving God uh, the, what he deserves. And God deserves our worship. I, I'm a sports fan. And uh, one of my favorite players of years was Oral Hershiser. Does anybody remember Oral Hershiser? Yeah, several of you do. 1988 was an incredible year for Oral Hershiser. He was just 29 years of age. But he had a phenomenal year that year. He ended up 23-8. and eight. The Dodgers won the World Series. And, and he, over, he pitched some unbelievable games over the New York Mets in the National League Final and then over the Oakland A's in the World Series. And in fact, during that year, he had 59 scoreless innings, consecutive scoreless innings for a pitcher. And then he extended that into the playoffs with eight more. He ended up with 67 scoreless innings. That means he pitched 67 innings, three outs, and nobody ever got a run against him. Uh, it's pretty phenomenal and uh, what he did. And, and at w during one of the playoff games, they were zooming in on him in the dugout. And all Hershiser, they, they could tell that he was singing to himself. He was singing something. They could, but they couldn't make out what it was. And, and the announcer simply said that, well, he, with the way he's pitching, he sure has something to sing about. That's all they could think of. Well, he appeared on Johnny Carson. Now, Johnny Carson had that uh, what, Tonight Show. Is that what it's called? I don't know if it's even called that anymore, is it? And, um, I mean, then, then Jay Leno was on it, and I don't even know who's on it. But uh, I don't know who's on first. But um, he was on the Johnny Carson show, and they replayed that tape. And, the, and Johnny Carson asked Coral Hershiser, what song were you singing during the game? And would you sing it again right now? Well, he was reluctant to do so, but of course the audience cheered and yelled. And so on national TV, in front of all the, everybody, Earl Harshizer said, here's what I sang. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And it was just about that quiet. <laughs> Nobody knew what to do with that. But you know what's interesting? When Johnny Carson retired, and they replayed some of the highlights of his whole career at The Tonight Show, that program made the list with Oral Hershiser singing, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. You know what that is? That's worshiping God, no matter what you're doing. That was, that was really a blessing. Now, there was one other gift they gave, myrrh. Myrrh, like frankincense, is a perfume, but not unlike frankincense, myrrh smelled of death. In fact, myrrh in the ancient world was used to embalm a corpse. Jesus himself would be have have the, the myrrh used on him. You read about that in John 19. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea came and they used the myrrh upon Jesus. That, that pointed to his death. And by the way, that fulfilled Daniel chapter 9, a prophecy that Daniel gave. Daniel 9 and verse 24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem under the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now listen. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off 
but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end thereof shall be with a flood, and under the end of the war desolations are determined. Daniel prophesied Christ the Messiah would be cut off, but not for himself. He'd be cut off for others. It was a prophecy given by Daniel about the Lord Jesus. And the myrrh they brought, they understood that. Many people believe these wise men were from Babylon. They probably had been influenced by Daniel and the writings that God gave Daniel. And that pointed them to the Messiah and pointed them to the Savior. And so we, we understand that, that we see his death even in the gifts that the wise men brought, okay, as they gave him gold and frankincense and the myrrh. And then we know number six, his death was also announced by John the Baptist. John the Baptist. John chapter 1, when John sees Jesus coming, how did John announce Jesus? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And they all knew, listen, all those Jewish folks, they knew what the Lamb of God meant. They knew that this would be God's Lamb that He provides. They wouldn't have to take a lamb without blemish, without spot, and, 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 and kill it, and then and, and, and sprinkle the blood. They wouldn't have to do that anymore if they accepted God's Lamb as their sacrifice for their sin. He was appointed by God, and He'd be the sacrifice, listen, for the sins of the whole world. So John announced it. And then number seven, Christ declared that he would die himself. He declared it. We read it in John 12 in verse 27. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. This hour was the hour of his crucifixion. This hour was the time that he would die on the cross for our sin. I don't believe that Jesus Christ ever prayed that he wouldn't have to do that. I think that he was willing to go. He, he told Pilate, he says, nobody takes my life, I lay it down. And I lay it down and I'll raise it up again. Luke 9 and verse number 22. Let's look at that verse. Luke 9 and verse number 22. Would you turn there please? Luke 9 and verse 22. Jesus is asking his disciples, whom do men say that I am? And of course they answered, some say you're John the Baptist and some say Elias and others say he's one of the old prophets risen again. But Peter said, you know, Jesus said, who am I? And Peter said, that you're the Christ of God. And then in verse 21, he straightly charges them and commands them to tell no man that thing. Now look at verse 22, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised again or raised the third day. I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to suffer many things. I'm going to be slain. And I'll rise again the third day. The, he, he, he knew he was going to die. And by the way, Hebrews tells us, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God. He was ready to give his life a ransom for us. He was willing, uh, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for you and me. Now, the importance of Christ being born to die. As I said earlier, I think from the time he was born, all the way through childhood, all the way through his ministry, he lived in the shadow of that cross. He knew it was coming. He knew what he was here for. And, and I think every morning when he got up, I think he was aware of the cross. Every night when he laid his head down, I believe he was aware of the cross. He came, he came to be the author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our salvation. He was born to die. So I said earlier, there's no salvation in his birth. And we, we can celebrate his birth. Nothing says we shouldn't. But there's no command for us to celebrate his birth. It's just in the Bible that he was born. But there's no command. There is a command that we celebrate the Lord's table. That's a command that we do it as often as we do it in remembrance of him. But there's no salvation in his birth. And, and sometimes I wonder people who just go to church on Christmas and Easter, you know, they ought to find out there's a lot happening in between there. 
there's a, they're, they're missing 30 years of, of Jesus' life. And, and the, the Lamb of God would have to be slain. The price of sin has to be paid for. And that's why Jesus came. He would come, God became a man, so He could pay the price for our sin. And only Jesus could pay the price. He hath made Him to be sin for us when He knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay, That's the admonition from Philippians. And how He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So, we understand that He came to earth to do many things. He did. While He was here, He revealed God to men. He taught the truth. He fulfilled the law. He offered His kingdom. And He certainly showed us how to live as, he's, as our example. And we could follow His steps. He brought peace. He revealed the love of God to the world. But His ultimate coming to earth was to die was to be the sacrifice for us. God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died on our behalf. Those tiny hands and feet of the baby in the manger, they were formed so that one day nails would be driven through them. That warm, soft little body of the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, would one day be ripped open with a spear and the flesh torn off his back with the cat of nine tails. Jesus was born to die. The cross, the shadow of the cross was there from the very beginning. But he was born to die, as the song says and as the scripture teaches, born to die that we might live. What would you celebrate tonight if it weren't for Christ? What would you celebrate? We're, we, we'd be lost in our sin. We'd be of all men most miserable. It'd be empty. There'd be an emptiness to it if we didn't have Christ. Born to die in my place. so that the, And that, that should be central to all we do. Is that He's the Savior. It, it, it just is... It's incomprehensible to me how many, how many churches that Christ is the head of the church and they say they won't have service this Sunday. At all. At all. And I think that, that is, here's the thing, did we consult the head of the church before we made that decision? It's always a good before you make decisions to consult your head. Isn't it? How many times you made a mistake and you said, man, I just wasn't. What you mean is I didn't consult my head before I did that or before I said that. You ought to consult the head. Out of necessity, we run to Jesus. Out of necessity, we run to Christ because there's salvation in no other. There's help in no other. And out of gratefulness for what He's done for us, we live for Him. Out of gratefulness. Paul said, I'm a debtor. I live, I live for God out of gratefulness for what He's done for me. Hasn't He done a lot for you? Hey, hasn't He saved your soul? Hasn't He forgiven your sins? Hasn't He written your name in heaven? Hasn't He done all things well? Let's, let's live for Him. Let's... Let's make sure you keep the focus on Him in these next few days. Amen? Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, we thank You so much that You were born to die. Thank You, Jesus, for coming to earth and tabernacling with men, taking on flesh, living a sinless, victorious life, and Lord, we, we believe you, you are our example and we do know how to live victoriously because of what you did. But none of that would matter if you didn't die for our sin. If you didn't rise again the third day, victorious over death, over hell, victorious over Satan and principalities and powers. 
Thank you, Lord. Born to die that we might live. We're only enjoying Christmas. We're only enjoying the birth and the celebration of your birth because of your death. We love you. We thank you for saving us. Thank you for all you've done for us. I pray that we would, out of grateful hearts, live our lives for you, for your glory and for your honor. Now, Father, dismiss us with your care tonight. Make us mindful that you go with us and keep our focus, keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. And, Lord, I'll thank you for it. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see. I'm gonna, what are we going to sing? I don't want to sing that. Let's, uh, what can we close with? Um, what's a good song to close that with? Hey, hey, wait a minute. I like that. What, what is that, number 11? Where's Bob Reed? Come up here, Bob. I'm not going to lead this one, all right? Number 11, he is mine. I like that. That's a good one to end on, all right? Let's sing the first verse in there. All right? Sing it like you mean it, all right? Number 11. You got it? Before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to Choir, no practice tonight.